a lot of trial and error here. We're figuring it out. This isn't preseason. I think this is just pre this is just this season. Is, is it? Yeah. No, you're right. It is preseason. I'm high. Well, not literally high. Oh! But figuratively speaking. I. Oh, no. I'm chilling. What are you looking for? Uh, what's up? Cool. Oh, my God. Hold on. I think they're in a game right now. Or they're about to. Oh, there we are. Okay. Da 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 da. Now you guys can hear us. Colors waiting to inspire. Oh. I know. I know. Ah uh, ah. Uh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the the first preseason game of Fairfax Esports. Uh, my name is Ryan Sean, and next to me is... Hi, I'm Jasmine Torres. All right, let's get it. Starting out with the blue side and an ash band. This seems like an ash band looking at um, a pigeon, pigeon, and the enemy ADC is most played and ranked. And I have to admit, uh, the, the pigeon's ashes a very, a very basic ADC, but it's also a pick that has a lot of util, has, has a lot of slows, the vision, very easy to use with the ultimate. And there comes an Ezreal ban. The Ezreal ban, not sure um, the purpose of it is, it is, but from what I heard, there the Fairfax team has no idea of a draft from my information. I think maybe they just want to cover a bunch of their bases. Like, maybe their own uh, picks are going to be very reliant on not being poked. Maybe they just yeah. want to get rid of all of that, you tell. Yeah, and as we speak, uh, the Viego band comes out. Uh, Viego is also a very versatile jungler, in my opinion. Um, very easy, very good clears. His E is one of the most broken abilities in the game. And his ultimate and his passive makes him the most versatile slash tanky player in the game. And a Pantheon band. That Pantheon band could be used for a lot of things. Pantheon support, Pantheon mid, Pantheon top. Pantheon... Is a character that also is good roaming, so it's a good ban. Yeah, Kali. That is one of our players' top picks, and yep. I dare say it. A Kali one trick. It's he okay. is in a Kali one trick. Our mid laner, Tyson 12. But, you know, he probably has been practicing a lot of other a I lot do of characters. Hope so. yep. I do hope so. He might be in a little bit of a pickle if he hasn't. Are we aware if they've seen their champion.ggs? No clue. No clue. No clue. It's okay. Um, we got it, folks. I think they're banning for the count. Like, from what I know, uh, Tyson12 does not like to play against Ezreal. Right. And from what I know, 
a hard counter of Akali is Pantheon. There's also a Fiona ban, I believe. Fiora ban. Fiora. Thank there you. There you go. What's the Fairfax Esports? Uh, I got you. Hold on. Uh, and the Aatrox... Aatrox first pick comes from Zombie CF. I mean, the, the point of an Aatrox pick is simple. Aatrox is one of, if not the most technically skilled top lane you need, but yet... When you play it, it's... A Lulu pick. I believe that... That is probably going to be paired with an ADC. Um, could be a Twitch. Could be a Vayne. I, Vayne is not... In my opinion, Vayne is not a good pick here because of the Aatrox. Understandable. Aatrox is, has too many dashes and too much movement. And Vayne will never be able to kite that Aatrox. Five seconds left. Picking the Sejuani first. Sejuani, an amazing utility slash tank jungle. Obviously used in a lot of pro play. Probably the top five play junglers with um, junglers like Maokai. It looks like that's a Warwick jungle. A very uh, unplayed pick. Very solo queue though. Um, it's easy. also, from what I understand, a very beginner pick. Like that's a very safe pick that a lot of us use when we first get into the game. Yeah, or yeah. advised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the next pick coming from Stickboy922. Yo. Akshan. Akshan pick is... The, the pick about Akshan is very strong in lane. Very strong in a 2v2 situation as well. The weak lane is uh, when it's side laning. It's not a reli reliable pusher. His E is his util and his, um, his passive, however, makes him one of, if not the biggest game-changing characters in the game. And as you speak... The Varus comes with the Lulu. Varus, uh, a very another hot pick by our ADC Pigeon Twelve. Lovely, lovely. Yep. Now, um, the team is now making their second bans. What do you think they would ban at this point? Oh, a never mind. Crank. A Blitzcrank is a very good ban here. I mean, it's it's a very good ban because of the team comp, the the the, the blue team has the blue teams. Team comp is very pick oriented. It's very yes. what? Pick oriented. Like Thank that you. They play off picks. Right. The Warwick Forest. and Akshan is really good at focusing one one target at a time. Warwick alt and Warwick fear. Akshan and his passive kind of like That's Vayne. a Lux ban. And a Lux ban probably going for their for their mid laner because obviously their support is a Lulu. That Lux ban adds it adds value I would say just because. The amount of poke Varus and Sejuani and Lulu can have in a team fight, just cutting out one more mage could have been a better option for the blue team. And the Nautilus ban. So it looks like they're banning a lot of engaged champions to really play for the strength of Varus, which is Varus has that high range but low survivability. So they're right, trying to play right. to kite enemy team. And something like a, a Nautilus and a Blitzcrank really prevents um, the red team from actually kiting in a preferable way. It makes it very dangerous and risky for them. Yep, exactly. And the Garen band comes. Lovely, beautiful. Never seen before in this earth. Uh, there you go. Garen band. I'm not sure about that band. Maybe they were just afraid of a, a blender, af afraid of a Beyblade. Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip. Actually, I'm not going to sing that. We might get copyrighted. You never know in this world. You never know. You can never know. That's an Olaf pick. I believe that is our top. Olaf top. Olaf top. The reason why it's very broken. Is very pick as well. This is level three, level two. Early game pressure. You take a ghost and if you hit every single Q, the way you can connect it, you literally can get a solo kill in less than a minute with that character. It's a level one beast. And the Zeri to come with the pick and the support will be a Swain. That is not a favorable comp in my opinion. Swain is Swain is more for champions that have good CC combo with them. For example, Jinx, Caitlyn. Zeri goes right. well with more enchanters like Lulu and... That's a Silas. Continue though. Yeah, Lulu and Nami. However, the Silas is a great pick in my opinion. The Silas adds that the hint of... The hint of AP you need it, but at the same time is 
a good pick for Akshan because Silas can also roam and has a, a fairly good enough wave clear. Right. And so I think the, the main focal point of this game is going to be who, for the red team, for the right team is going right. to be who can kite better, who can protect the Varus better, who is able right, to right. give the front line. And the left team is going to be how well they can attach onto the Varus and the, the Silas. The characters like Aatrox and Warwick can give a, enough um, front line, but... All in all is just a little bit too unreliable. And the Zeri Swain, we'll see how, we'll, how that will end up. And we will meet you in three minutes as the spectator delay happens. Be right back. All right, welcome back. The stream delay has ended. We are now three minutes behind, and the game's begun. Yes, yes. Um, looks like um, they're trying to... There's a lot of pings on the top side and the bot side and the mid side, the, the main focal points where there could be invades. And it looks like they're trying to you know get ready for that invade because it is, it, is, it is a best out of one game. So right, of course. Their job and duty is not to fall for any of those invades in the early game. Hearing a lot of excitement around us. Wonder what that's about. We can't hear you on the stream. You can't hear us? Because we can hear ourselves and it says we're recording. Uh, talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk, talk. Uh, See, because it's recording us here too. 
Uh, that's odd. <laughs> I know, you really have to leave for the moment. I think that's... Everyone's contesting at their rivers, protecting, making sure that they are safe and sound. Mr. Nakata, could you at least hear, like, the, uh, the game audio? Oh, that's right, we're wild. Good, we're good, we're that's good. my voice. Oh, Lord. Looks like a, bl uh, a blue start and a red start, a bot side start both for both teams. This will mean that there will be a, an inevitable collision, collision in the top lane. Of course. How do we do that? Game? I actually think it's game. Oh, oh I, I've seen it before. Oh. Oh, that's, that's, a key, that's a key, though. Oh, I see. Technical difficulties, don't mind us. Alright, resuming back to the game, and the Warwick is completing his Gromp while the Sejuani got the level 3 from the bot side, and looks like they're going for a gank, and the Silas E's, it hits! Can he get the kill? No, the Auction is flashless now, due to the Silas. He is safe for now, we see a ward placed mid to make sure that they know, for future reference, where they're coming from. And this ball lane matchup, obviously it seems like Varus and Lulu will have the early game lead, just the, the Swain does not have that impact it does compared to a Lulu and Varus. And as you can see, they're obviously obliterating this trade. The wave is pushing into the to the tower of the of the blue side. And it looks like red side is just capitalizing on this range difference they have. And it also looks like they have a level difference, which makes a difference because now that they have certain skills and abilities, they're going to use them to the best of uh, their chances. Yeah, yeah. And um, as we speak, it looks like the Warwick is actually going to get to the the scuttle first. There appears to be a scuffle at the top. They're pinging it. And a gank to the Olaf is counter ganked by the Sejuani. And the Q like lands and die. the Q goes in. Olaf goes in and the E gets is able to get the first blood on the Warwick. Warwick. Dies. If we see here, a good attempt by the Aatrox and the Warwick ends up getting completely denied by the Olaf and the Sejuani. Even if the Olaf didn't use even if the Warwick didn't use Flash, that was an inevitable kill. <laughs> I think there's feedback from our own mics. Yeah, you can hear that, right? Solo kill mid lane. Let's look at this one. Right. Clearing the wave. And Auction with no mana, staying around with the Ignite and the autos. And the Auction will be finished off. Good job. <laughs> Does any team have really good vision right now? Could you show us? Yep. Um, looks like there's a lot of vision on the top side river as there was a skirmish um the thing about it is warwick did get the scuttle but they were not able to capitalize on that moment and as we speak there looks looks like olaf is looking for a dive here the demolish is up but can he capitalize it one more q hit very close one more e will be able to finish it but looks like olaf is taking his chances that makes sense now looking at the sejuani right here right uh just the amount of time Sejuani has compared to the world. I've muted one of us so that the feedback is What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm not too sure. Whenever I meet
All right, we're back into it. No, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, I'm tripping. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. Both and the drag is up with the bot prio in the middle right now. But if you look at the mid situation, Auction is clearly at a disadvantage. I mean, just look at the levels and the items on the two. A 10 CS lead. It looks like the red team has more control words as well. They're prioritizing their vision and their teamwork. Yeah, but I haven't seen many words uh, control on the other side. The Olaf will always have a consistent pressure against the Aatrox. Just the character difference. Olaf will always have more healing. Right, right. And the Aatrox is able to counter Olaf in one way, and that's when he land, fully lands his W. That's when he can really control Olaf's healing. And as he's speaking, the ball lane currently in this situation, Sejuani going for a dive, going for a gank, but it looks like it's not going to happen. Olaf with the ult, he pops in Aatrox pops all together, but is ultimately not able to win the trade. Olaf is very low right now in the in the situation of a dive. Wait, that feedback is so bad. I know, I'm, yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, gotcha. Uh, such are the technical difficulties. Pardon? Yeah. I think Nathan tried to fix the uh, thing one time, but it's a problem. So, down bot Sejuani, Luku, and Peyton. Okay, sorry, Varus crawled down there. Looks like they're deciding to push. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear each other through here. It's oh no, I'm I'm putting a new thing. Oh, he got ganked in lane. That's unfortunate. Try talking and see if that works. Yeah, let's see the feedback. Hello, Spooky Hi, Fairy. No. What's going on? I'm not an audio guy, so I don't know if that'll No, I don't know either. As you speak, a top dive by the Olaf, and the Conquer is popped. But it looks like Olaf is not able to finish it. The blue buff and the red buff is still on the Olaf, which makes it an. A big potential to the poke that Olaf has with this team. He can spam it without any mana problem. Looks like Akshan is trying to capitalize on that mid push while the Silas home, but I mean, this level and item difference that is currently on the Silas. Oh, and as you speak, another gang, a Q lens. The Sedrana E lens. Akshan is stunned, and the passive auto is going to finish it off. Way twice. How do you feel about that? I think that's just the auction is playing a little too aggressive. Um, if you just see the vision right here, there's absolutely no wards for the blue side. This one pink ward, the whole entire map is empty, and this is a big problem right now. Of course, and, it is. And Olaf getting another solo kill, even with the Aatrox executioner, Olaf is just continuing to come with that wave management. And Warwick goes for the ult, gets the Q, but will not do any damage because of Olaf's tankiness. And then Olaf with the dance. Just saw him dance and twerk on that Warwick. It's 
That's a crazy thing to do. We might have to talk about team, uh, you know, kindness. I think it's okay. Well, yeah, maybe, it but we'll find out in the official. As you speak, using this cryo that we have, so Juana is going to be a little bit too busy. Nice job. Down mid, it looks like Zarian Swain have finally found a way to push a little bit towards the uh, turret. Looks like it's getting that far at all. Oh, landed by the Aethroth, and the, these trades that are happening, Olaf is just absolutely crushing them. The bone plating is gone. Will there be a dive? It just lands the Q and barely is not able to get the kill angle. Then you had the bot lane, the Swain ulting. Lulu shielding herself. And the, the blue side lived. The Zarya is finished off by the by the Varus and the Lethal Temple is going to be able to finish and off. And so the tables turn. They pushed, but they could not keep that pressure up. And that's what I'm saying about this matchup. Just the matchup of, of Varus and Lulu. The Swain and Zary, Zary have a, no hiding ability. And as you speak, a double kill top lane from the top jungle skirmish. Let's look at this right here. And a little thumbs up. Thank you too. As the kills that falling happen. It looks like Warwick's coming in for the gank. Sejuani gank the gank. The Warwick counter ganks. The Sejuani does counter gank. And the ult hits. Flashing in. Gets the kill. Shoots the Q the other way, but is able to stun. An amazing turret distribution. That damage was perfectly distributed in a way where the Olaf was able to look out. And their first turret destroyed, gone into ash. Going on the second turret already, then this Warwick is absolutely getting crushed. Another kill. It looks like they might finally get punished for this one. It doesn't look like it. It looks like the Aatrox just gave up on it, and the Olaf is continually healing at this point. The Olaf is not dying. M misses the third Q. Oh my god. And they escape. The, the execution is happening between the jungle and the top. Look at this Olaf's items. He literally has no items and is still putting this much pressure on the map. Right, right. This top laner is gonna... It feels like cancer right now, honestly. As a top laner, getting denied of CS, getting denied of jump, getting denied of XP. Right. So is his auction. I mean, I look at look at the, the gold difference already. 12, 12 kills deficit, 2 towers, 2 objectives ahead already. 10k gold difference at 14 minutes. Right. This game is going to be very hard to win, especially because of the characteristics of, of the blue of the red team. Their, their stability with the Sejuani and the Silas. The only bad part about the team is the Olaf, but the Olaf is so fed, it's going to go good for at least 20 minutes. I think I also want to highlight the difference of vision. If you take a look at the blue team, it's completely dark, both in their jungles, on the rivers, and compared to red, I think. Hold on. Yeah, the blue is basically a dark cinema. And as we speak, a well-played pinch is able to land the side to kill, and the dragon is naturally started by Sejuani. Silas roaming up to catch and punish the auction. Oh my gosh, and the immediate, the insane oh. amount of damage with the Everfrost is not able to finish the auction, but it gets them to 35, 25% HP. And Olaf is continuing to side lane that push. Oh, bone planting is down. Ultimate cannon continue. Continue. And he continues. To kill that, that Aatrox with his ult. It's a spree. It's a killing spree. It's unstoppable. Olaf, He's a little stuck with, that, bars. with that damage, I think he wins this. He, Olaf will not lose this. Oh, and he dodges the Warwick ult. Warwick runs away and Olaf emotes after emotes. And a, looks like there was a bot dive as we speak as well. It does appear. Flashes, flashes the Twain W. And it looks like the Sejuani came in from the back. Alt. Clean finish. There's One Olaf. of those turrets fell while talking about the dive down bottom. Yeah, it looks like Olaf is just continually pounding that split push. That mid prio is just completely lost as well. I just look at the CS difference. I, I'll keep mentioning the CS difference because of how important the gold difference is as well. 152 CS compared to the 109 by the Zeri. Zeri with the static shift barely getting that while the Ginsu's and almost looks like a Bork is going to really amplify the Varus' damage. 
felt like a thousand gold bricks. Exactly. And the Silas is looking on the Warwick. The insane amount of damage and, and the Varus is able to finish off. And this is the plays that the blue team has to do. The blue team has no control of any lanes. It's 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 looking doomed, honestly. Do you think they're gonna be able to turn it around? I mean, honestly, every game is winnable. Um, that's, Fair enough. That's what Faker says, and I love Faker. You know what I'm saying? As you should. Exactly. And another kill of the Oxon while the Oxon's defending the tower. Looks like a wraparound from the Sejuani. This is the versatility of Sejuani that I love. She's so tanky. She can literally... She's the best dive jungler with Elise. Right, of course. And just the, the ability... The to versatility. Kill him under tower like that. The body of Oxon right there is super sad. That leads to... The Baron. The Herald. Will they go for the Herald? Looks like an easy choice. So setting up vision for it. Yeah. The Silas is now splitting. That's the. Uh, yet another technical. Alright. Would you bring that thing up again? Oh, uh, okay. Weird, okay. Well, we've got Rift Herald. Wasn't that turret already gone? Are we too far back in time? No, we Yeah. It's we'll figure it out. Um, doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think it's. I think they have first. Jimmy, what is Jimmy? That was pushing the middle. They're looking like the, the the blue team's only way to win this is for the red team to make a mistake. Obviously, at this point, the game is it feels like a really grave mistake has to be made before they ever yeah. find that chance to close that gap because it's large yeah i mean just the level difference you level i'm just naming the levels lulu level 10 swain level 9 two two level differences in each lane olaf level 13 yeah especially compared to those level 9s level looks like the red team is also struggling in the cs um they seem compar compar comparatively newer to the, the, red, to the team? red team, yeah. Oh, I'm looking at their laning and looking at the wave management. The Herald is going to go down mid, breaking the, the mid and the tower as well. And the Silas going in with the Sejuani. Aatrox pops his ult though, and the Ignite is on Aatrox. Will they be able to kill him? Ferris damage is too big. Warwick pops his W, but is not able to do anything. And a sweep, a three man sweep as as the mid lane comes in. It looks Are they like gonna... they're closing in the finish. Yeah, and the TP from the. From the Olaf is coming in. Seven HP on the Herald. The Herald goes down as the two remaining people are this are the Swain. The Swain goes down with the Sejuani CC. Zeri like ult, death. but is not able to completely com conquer the Olaf as he ults away, but dies in the Nexus. And the Nexus goes down before 20 minutes. Can they go down 20 before 20 minutes? Exactly at 20 minutes. Where did you see that, friends? Hold on. There it is. GG's. That's me. Sorry, friends. We love you. Mwah. Yeah, where's like... Oh. How do you feel about that? Do you have first? Sorry, it's, right. it's just a technical difference. Looking at the stats here, um, we're just gonna mention the insane amount of damage all the laners have done. The Olaf, 
and the Varus, all and the Silas, all doing around 14k damage. I don't mean to throw any shade, but look at that Swain damage versus the Warwick. Yeah, the I think we can say are all agree that the Warwick did not have as much as impact he wanted to. Um, let me just. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. Yeah. And that will be the end for today's uh, League of Legends broadcast. Um, I was your scout. I was your caster, Ryan Sean. Also your caster, Jasmine Torres. Thank you for joining us. Fairfax Esports. Let's go Lions. Next time. Go Lions.